I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and uh, especially uh, folks who are on the call right now, but also the ones uh, who are maybe catching this by recording. Uh, we are thinking about you guys too. Hopefully um, everyone on here and their families are, are doing well. Um, you know, if there was ever a time where we realized how important elections were, I think in the middle of the pandemic uh, definitely underscores that. So uh, today we're going to be talking about the, our chapters. So uh, hopefully uh, you are interested in activism because that is what this is about. Um, nice to meet you. This is who I am. I am the director of campaigns and advocacy at the Center for Election Science. Uh, I am. Uh, I live in Washington, D.C., right outside Washington, D.C., in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, normally, when uh, we are allowed to go outside and, and go on buses and trains and go to restaurants, we, uh, my girlfriend and I, we, my fiance and I, would go on uh, on trains and the metro and uh, go drink at bars and tell people about it. So we called it rail drinks. Hopefully, it's free free plug for me. Um, and I've been a campaign person since 2013. Uh, I've worked on uh, federal, state, and local campaigns. So I've, I've done my fair share of campaigning. Um, what, it, what I learned on the campaign trail is um, a lot of times, even, even if I won, even if I got what I wanted, even if my candidate really um, did a great job and we, we got change, um, I realized pretty quickly the system was in, in general was really broken right and that's why i'm here i realized that you know even if i support this candidate or that candidate that so many people are just not having their voice heard um and there's too much uh inertia towards changing things so uh, i will have oops sorry Okay, and help me out with the, the questions. Uh, I'll just ask her to raise her hand or just holler at me. But um, so yeah, I want to ask you guys, roll lightning round. Uh, you know, why, why, why are you here? What, what makes you want to be involved in this at all? We'll start with Marco. I've been picking on Marco today. There we go, Marco, I got you now. Okay, sorry, can you hear me? You good? Okay. Yep. So um, I guess I'm, I'm here because uh, more or less, I get a, a couple of years ago, um, I, it was funny. I was kind of debating a friend of mine about um, like just different like government systems and whatnot. And he suggested, he's like, you know, we should maybe, you ever thought about um, approval voting? And he was explaining it to me and I was kind of like, oh, you, that, isn't that just a ranked ballot? No, and he explained it to me and I said, you know, this actually makes a lot of sense. And it was funny because around the time we were talking, it was shortly after um, the federal government, we got like a new, we got a new uh, federal government in place. Justin Trudeau, as I'm sure you're aware, he promised he was going to change the voting system and he never did. So um, when I started, like I, I looked at the Center for Election Science and I'm like, well, wait a minute, this is, this is really, this is awesome. Like this is just an incremental change they could have at least done that and kind of seen, you know, what, like what could transpire from that. Cause the thing with, uh, you know, with, with Canadian politics is that Canadians are very like, they want change, but they're very like, they like to kind of hover around in the middle and they, they like inc incremental baby steps. So I'm thinking, well, yeah, you technically need to like amend the constitution, which kind of sounds scary to some people, but it's really just a matter of looking at like what counts as a valid ballot, casting your ballot and looking at that kind of legislation and again if you if you present it to people as well listen you can still vote the same way it's just opening up another door that's probably like the best way that i've been able to describe it so when i when i see a presentation like this how to start a chapter this couldn't come at a better time because i've been trying to explain it to people and i, I just i don't know really like how to get started you know what i mean so basically, I don't want to take up too much time, but my my whole thing is I like it because it, it's it's an incremental way to change and make a positive impact. If that sounds kind of cliche, but that's great, yeah. Marco. I I couldn't uh, I couldn't have said it better myself, and I, I probably won't say it better than you. So 
Um, did they, anyone in the chat, anyone else wanted to maybe share? You all should be able to unmute yourself um, too if you wanna chime in. Okay. Right, go ahead, Alan. I got gotcha. you. I unmuted you. Hi, um, yeah, I'm Alan. Um, I, I agree with everything Marco said um, and uh, would like to add a few things. Like I'm here, I think I originally got into voting reform because CGP Gray had some really good videos on YouTube that were explaining the problems with first past the post. Um, and it's such a fundamental thing in, in democracy to have uh, a voting system that works well. Um, I, I kind of grew up with this vision of democracy as this great like deliberative experiment where the people are, you govern with the consent of the governed and their participation and people decide how their government should look. And with such a broken voting system, that's not what we have now. Um, and more recently, I've kind of gotten into the idea of the ideas of John Rawls and like, what does it mean for a system to be just? And uh, for a system of government to be just, you need fairness and equality. And we don't have equality with the way our votes are, are tallied right now. Um, so kind of along the same lines as Marco, this seemed like an incremental reform. It could be done with from the grassroots up. It doesn't need an act of Congress to uh, move forward. We can test it at local levels and move up, and it doesn't uh, need it, it doesn't need big support from the the highest ranks of society. Um, and building that grassroots effort, kind of, I'm hoping can restore some faith in democracy as a whole, where it's a little bit under attack worldwide, where you see a lot of authoritarian regimes gaining power. Um, so I wanna combat that by giving power back to people and make, helping them participate in a way that they can see uh, that their voice matters and they get results that they're happier with. That is great. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you for sharing. That was really, that was really awesome. Um, Amy, uh, Amy said she wanted to share too. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, you bet. So um, I admittedly um, have never been uh, that active in uh, politics, but this last year I got involved in, um, so I moved to Iowa, we're first in the nation. And so I got involved with the Andrew Yang campaign and I observed um, so many people really liked his ideas and his thoughts, but there was a lot of um, strategic voting going on. Um, and so even though they liked him, they weren't gonna vote for him because they didn't think he had a chance to win. And um, so that surfaced for me. He's also a proponent of ranked choice voting, which I'd never heard of. I'd never really given any thought to voting systems before. Um, and so after the campaign, I've been trying to figure out, I love, um, I'm a systems thinker and I like um, working on root cause issues. And I really feel like, um, like, like just like what everybody else has said, like this is really, um, it's a fundamental place where uh, we can all agree across party lines, make a difference, have our votes heard and bring power back to the people where it belongs. Thank you so much, Amy, that's great. I, um, I had one, I will just keep this moving along. So to Marco and, and Alan and, and Amy's point, they said one way or another that this is fundamental, right? Right, and uh, I had, uh, we have a lot of techie guys and girls in our organization, right? And uh, uh, I was talking to one of them and he put it in a, in a great way where he said, it's like they, there was a bug in the code that now that there's a big problem now that we didn't even think about, it, right? Um, let's keep, I'll move to the next slide. Um, and it, this is the bug in the code, right? You know, that, that we wrote, uh, 240 years ago that we didn't think was going to really matter at all. Uh, now it matters a bunch, right? And, uh, you know, we've, we talked about and we all kind of know that uh, the problem is just the, this first past the post, the, the plurality system. Um, and like you said, Amy, if it, it forced people to vote strategically, right? So, for example, uh, we did a poll, and, and I'll just bring it up because Amy 
brought up that her favorite candidate was Andrew Yang. And our, we did a poll in uh, March, and it was just to see what people, you know, who would do, uh, how would things go if we had different voting methods? And, uh, you know, Mr. Yang had uh, two, 3% in plurality in the plurality system. But in the approved voting system, we had a, about 40%, right? And what does that show you? People, um, more people obviously liked uh, him as a candidate than they were allowed to say, right? And it leads to all kinds of bad things, not only for Mr. Yang, but for candidates in St. Louis, in Fargo, formerly in Fargo, and now, um, but also across the United States. Now again, Caitlin, if, if anything comes up in the chat, you just let me know. Uh, yeah, I was just going to mention that Christine, um, whenever there's a good time, she was going to share as well about why she's here and why she likes approval voting. Absolutely. Sorry, I uh, sorry I didn't see your hand up, Christine. Yeah, please. That's okay. I was late to put it up. Um, what, what I was going to say is that I moved to this um, topic from working on climate change, and I thought this would be so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. People don't have a preconceived idea about it and a negative yeah. feeling toward it. They're just a little more, um, haven't heard of it. Right. But, Fortunately, in San Diego, the first thing I ran into is a group that used to be working on getting money out of campaigning, which I think right. is a wonderful idea, but they couldn't make any headway. And then they moved to working for ranked choice voting. And unfortunately, so I'm hoping mm -hmm. that um, you can give me some hints of how to, uh, how to address that kind of problem where <laughs> another good group is working for what I think is the wrong answer. Absolutely. Yeah, I, and I, actually, uh, Christine, I remember meeting you in LA. I'm glad exactly. to see. I'm exactly. glad to see you again. So, yeah. um, so to her point, and we'll get to that. I guess that's a good way to segue into this one. Is you know we at the Center for Election Science we have looked at all the methods we and believe that not only do we we like approval voting, right? First and foremost, we like it because we know it's easy. Uh, it's easy for people to vote for all the people they like. Um, we know it has a lot less downsides. And uh, that, you know, there's a couple, uh, it has a couple benefits that don't get talked about a lot, right? Every machine in America can do it because almost, you know, the dumbest machine in America can do uh, approval voting. You can do it with pen and paper if you want it. Um, and understand the result and then want to take three days. Uh, and because you, the machines, you have machines that can already do it, um, the cost is basically little to, to none, right? So that is just a, a huge thing in our favor, favor besides the fact that we like this method on its academic grounds, right? And that's where I think we will really catch up, uh, Christine, and I think, you know, things tend to get involved, you know, instituted faster when they don't cost a lot of money. <laughs> that's, just a, that's just a fact. So that's one thing that we are going to keep pushing. And then, uh, you know, I know a lot of times people want to be uh, kind of head to head, right, about this method or this method, right? Um, you know, we push hard to tell people and to tell our supporters that we're an alternative, right? These are all alternative methods. And just because you've only heard of ranked choice doesn't mean it's the only one in the world, right? There's, there's normally two types of folks. Um, who, when they support ranked choice, people who like it because it's the only one they've heard about and they really, really desperately want change. Um, we love those people too because we can talk to them and I think they'll like our method too. And then the second group of people who, you know, like it on academic grounds, you're always going to have a harder time winning them over, but, you know, practicality, practicality, practicality. That's kind of what we keep pushing. Um, I will move on. Unless anything else? is poignant but thank you christine that was a great point and i and i saw that group too i, I think we're going to work on it i think um so the path forward what are we doing now uh we had fargo in 2018 st louis in 2020 uh but what next so what our goal is as as, as activists and people who really care about this um we need to get as many people involved in this project as possible right um as many as much as we know a ranked choice person or something, you know, or, or someone who's really pushing that, we know 
a hundred other people that don't know any of it, <laughs> that have never heard of, that don't know brain choice from approval from a hole in the ground. You know, that's what we're working on. And that's why we work all over the country, right? Um, so you all are, are, are first to know, uh, you get a sneak peek of a new program that we are building out called the Community Program, which uh, enables regions of the United States to create this community and uh, really start to build the chapters up. And so, and as a group, we, we mostly focus on cities because again, those are your laboratories of democracy. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's easier for us. We're not a huge organization either, right? You know, we got to kind of pick our battles. Uh, but we, our goal is bigger and bigger. So the next step, and I hope you can all see this, uh, I worked very hard on paint uh, to make sure that you guys could uh, uh, kind of get a visual. Um, so we are, uh, like I said, you are is a sneak peek of our chapter uh, com or our community program. Uh, so what are the communities? So the communities are roughly based around the, the census regions, you know, so four. Um, everyone, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're interested in approval voting, uh, you belong to the community, right? We want you to talk to people um, that uh, are interested in this type of thing. Uh, communities will meet each other, discuss wins, challenges, have fun. And it's also just, uh, so it, it's good. It creates a little bit of a rivalry. It's like having a division in football or baseball or something, which is good. And, but it also is an open house at the same time. It lets new people see, hey, what's going on? And, um, you know, once three, four, five, you know, people from the same city um, join, you know, these communities are getting, starting to get involved. Uh, then we really will start to push it as a chapter, right? And uh, we are also, a few people have been to chapter meetings so far. Um, it hasn't been a lot of people, but we are going to streamline the process just so, A, it saves you time. It's, it's fun, but also saves you time. Um, but if you've never been to a meeting, you don't have to worry about it. Just know that you will have a great time in the future. Uh, so how do we, so the number one question I get asked is, what do I do? What the hell do I do? <laughs> you know, how do I start, how do I get from here to, to change, right? And the number one thing is you have to start. <laughs> so step one, you're already there. This is, this is the kickoff party right here. Um, this is, this, we made this flyer when we were able to run around the country <laughs> and actually meet people in person. We can't do that anymore. Uh, so congratulations, you made it. Uh, the next thing to do is, again, just keep trying to find uh, activists in your community, and we're going to try to connect you with activists in your community, right? You'd be surprised. There's, you know, you say, oh, no one's here that knows about approved voting. There's someone down the road. There's someone in my, my complex. I didn't know that sign up for our listserv. <laughs> you know, so there are people all over the place. Um, number three is research the laws. Uh, Approved voting, what we like about it is very flexible, right? It can work in most situations. Um, and a lot of times, unfortunately, other methods can't always work in a legal framework of a state constitution or a city charter. Uh, luckily for all of you, we, we have just instituted a research team of dedicated volunteers who help look into the laws of certain states. Um, if you're interested in that, I will talk about that in a bit. And then finally, once you know the rules, uh, it's just time to go uh, talk to people. Let's talk to people. Let's uh, start looking about how you get those ballots, uh, how to get a ballot initiative in your city. Um, normally that it requires collecting signatures in a certain amount of time and making sure your language you know, will fit in the charter. And then finally, uh, and you can do this basically all the time, is build support and educate, 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 educate. Right? Why are some other methods, you know, popular? Because somebody talked about it at their party meeting, their local party meeting, or someone talked about it at their local League of Women and Voters meeting, or their local Kiwanis meeting. People that didn't know that this was even a thing. That's how we're going to get there too, right? One group at a time, and that's how you, you're going to see that we we kind of get up there. And if we do that grassroots work, we get out there. People know what we're trying to do. Uh, we're going to win, and we're going to get approved voting, 
in certain places. And, and I see the chat lighting up. I wonder if we have any questions about this. Yeah, there's a couple questions there slash comments. Great. Um, Emily was just asking, what's the quarantine safe version of step one? <laughs> and I know that's- This is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I know the people are like getting tired of Zoom, but um, at, for the foreseeable future, that's probably going to be the main way that people are connecting and organizing, right? Right. And I think, and uh, you know, replace, you know, this is also a little bit of an older document, replace uh, kickoff party with a community meeting, right? So be on the lookout. Everyone belongs to the community, uh, even our Canadian friends. And uh, we will uh, make sure that you get uh, plugged in with people around you. And so we can just start talking about it. Um, so that will be your kickoff party in the quarantine version. And then Chris Adam um, also had a comment about, um, he's in Delaware and he doesn't know anybody in his state working on voting method reform. He knows some activists, but um, he doesn't have close relationships with any of them. And they're busy with the 2020 election campaigns. Um, right. So he's thinking he should check out the website to see a full list of our chapters. Um, right now, Adam, we only actually have three chapters. And that's part of why we're doing this meeting is because we're hoping we can find more people who are willing to start chapters in their areas. Right, and, and to your point, um, the, I almost guarantee we have folks in Delaware, and if they're not in Delaware, they're, they're probably very close by. Um, you know, our folks tend to be spread up across the country. We have a couple thousand <laughs> supporters for all across the country. Um, there's a lot of them, and I am surprised every day how many there are. Um, one, one thing I want to point out is someone will always almost tell you, Ah, you know, let's just get through this election and then we'll figure it out, right? Um, I don't know if you've noticed, and I've not noticed this in my life, every election for the last 25 years has been the most consequential election of my lifetime. <laughs> and Because elections are important and people don't want to mess with the election. Uh, the good thing about kind of what we're doing is that it's mostly at the local level right now, right? So, you know, I normally think of it as, the big battleships, they're going to keep fighting. Uh, you know, we're going to sneak in a couple uh, PT boats and, and uh, you know, make the change where we can until we can really kind of get up to that scale. Um, do we have There's any more? Question in the chat um, from Colin. And he says, how do you recommend approaching background slash foundational relationship building during the pandemic with the goal of laying groundwork for a strong local chapter when the pandemic ends? Absolutely, that's a great question. So that's something I work, I've been working with the chapters that we have started is, uh, you know, there's, it's pretty easy, not to be diminutive of, of your question, is, it's pretty easy is start with who's around you, right? It's not rocket science, right? The people around you know you, trust you, right? Almost everyone on this call, I bet you, is a joiner, right? They're a part of this club or this group or this, or even this, you know, Facebook group or, or this and that. Um, just ask, eventually we'll have meetings again, right? Call them, right? We will have meetings again. Um, the, Ask, just ask to talk at the meeting, right? And, or ask uh, to have coffee with some of the leaders, um, even on Skype or even on Zoom. Uh, that goes a long way, because again, the, the, the especially high up types, I think that's kind of what you're talking about, Colin, it's like people who are in government or who are in big groups, they have to act democratically, right? If, if they haven't heard of something and their people haven't heard of something, it's not right for them to act basically because we came out of the last minute and told them to make the change, right? We have to educate their members too. So part of it too is, you know, having those coffees with folks, making sure they get on board, but at the same time, um, you know, helping them work with their leadership, right? A, a, a congressman can love it, but if, their elected people don't, if their constituents don't know, they're never gonna support it. Hopefully that answers your question. So, and some of that groundwork you can do now. 
make just start making lists like I think like you did the other day Colin uh, we had a activity the other day where we just listed 20 people we know and 20 groups we know that don't know anything about a proof of voting that's a great way to start and you'll be surprised how far that goes um, and then just one more quick comment and we'll let you get on to the next slide Adam says that he would love to help build a track build a chapter and he's sure that he could network with his fellow volunteers, but he definitely need help organizing. Um, and just to all of you, um, as I said to Adam, we're definitely here to provide that support. That's exactly why we're hosting these, um, these meetings so that we can give guidance and give support where needed. We obviously want the chapters to to take off with things and, and become independent, but we're definitely here to help um, and yeah, infuse whatever energy or guidance you need. Caitlin said it great. I agree fully. You know, that's why we're here, right? We're, we know that we're acting as a little bit of a catalyst right now. We're trying to stir the pot a little bit. We understand that. But at the end of the day, it will work for you like it did in Fargo and it works in St. Louis because it's powered by people on the ground in their community who want it because they want change. Um, let's keep going. You guys are doing great. Great questions. Um, so what is a chapter? A chapter is a volunteer-led group of supporters. Um, their group is to do exactly what I just said, which is create that, that change and do that grassroots work. Um, not many people know this. CES uh, is, <laughs> is four people spread across three time zones. Uh, we can't know everything. We can't do everything. And I'm in every campaign I've ever worked on, I've always been amazed by how the, the terrain on the ground is different in every place, right? Um, so you are the experts of where you live. I can't stress that enough. No one knows more about where you live than you, uh, unless I live there, but you know, that's not the case. Um, and just like you uh, asked, I think it was Adam, CES, that's why we're here. We're helped to organize, we're here to support. The amount of worksheets that I have made in trainings that I've done the last few weeks uh, has made, given me heartburn, but hopefully it uh, makes you happy and makes your life easy. Um, and, and what we want to do too is we want to put money where our mouth is. We would love, this is a fact, we would love to support a campaign in the communities that, that really get this going, right? Um, that's what we're, we're here for. And, 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 and at the end of the day, uh, there's a couple of different ways to say this, but every person is a chapter, every individual person, right? There might not be a hundred people in your neighborhood or in your community that um, like approval voting right now. But if you go out there and you tell people from your heart why you're supporting this and how you can make your community better, you're going you're gonna to have a group of people around you faster than you can think. So that's why I keep stressing that, you know, you might not be an official chapter yet, but everyone's a chapter and everyone's got a job to do to make sure that the outreach gets done. Um, again, that, uh, that kickoff party, you're here. So I wish we could have done this in person with cocktails uh, or beers by your house or, or milk if it was at uh, Caitlin's house. But um, you know, what does that mean? It's time to get it done. If you got a chapter, you got a bunch of folks that are ready to knock the walls down, right? Um, so there's, there's a couple of things you got to do. You got to do that research like we talked about. And, and God, are we prepared to help you do that research? We're ready. We, uh, that's, you know, figure out the laws of your state, the laws of your city, your county. Unfortunately, you would think, it's pretty easy to know whether you can change the voting method or not. It is a whole, it is a disaster <laughs> to try to find out. But, uh, how, and it's, it's different city to city, state to state, uh, county to county. Uh, so we know this process is not always the sexist process, but you know, all the people who have changed the community, you know, their community and the world have had to do some unsexy parts. But trust me, it'll be super, uh, Glamorous and great, you guys are gonna love it. And, and you know, but we're there, we're there every step of the way, right? We're gonna, we're gonna help you do that research. And uh, some of it's research in the log, and some of our research is just like I told Colin, just making lists of people to go talk to, groups who might be interested. 
It's not rocket science. And that's where it really helps to get four or five people together. Because your web of people, I mean, it's awesome. Just writing it all down, mapping it all out, you'll be able to really get a full view of the community and get this really in front of the community through mostly the, the networks you're already a part of. And that's, uh, you know, I made the legal research sound, you know, one way. Uh, the outreach is something, again, everybody can do, right? They just need to think about their own networks and really get out there. And again, starting is the hardest part. So again, you're here and largely the hardest part has been taken care of. Uh, any, set, any questions so far? I'm gonna probably get them in a bit, but do we get any more questions? Seeing none. Yeah, there's a couple questions in the chat. Um, <clears throat> One was sent accidentally privately to me, I think, so I'll read that one to you. But um, Colin asks, and this is a really good question right now, um, what traction does a campaign need to be considered for funding? 100 chapter members, 10,000 signatures, 50 local leaders. Like, what, what do we need in order to give people money for a campaign? That is an awesome question, Colin. Here's a, um, there's a couple criteria. We have, we have an unofficial list. And we've been talking about trying to make that more official. One is, you know, like you, and you get, and Colin keeps skipping ahead of the thing. Like you, we want to see big wins, right? We know that it matters. Um, we want, you know, we know that when we swing for the fences, you're going to get a couple home runs, right? And you saw how far we swung for it, and man, do we get it, right? And I, and I throw all my heart. You know, we're going to go uh, from Fargo to St. Louis, and bam, we went from Fargo, 120,000 people, to, you know, a city of almost 400,000 people, and they have major league sports. That's normally my uh, level for really jumping up there. So um, we're going we're gonna to get there. We, we want to see big wins. And when you, uh, and to that point, um, I, I, I constantly, a big question, you'll come up whenever you do organizing is where, right? Where to go? Do I do it in my suburb or do I do it for the big city? One of the reasons we really like the big cities is they send a message to people, right? They send a message that well, this is serious. This is, a, this is how, uh, it's not a fluke, right? This isn't a gimmick. This is how a lot of people, a lot of people want their lives uh, to, to go, to, to be governed by. Um, and it fits that purpose of getting it actually in the hands of a couple million people, which is what we're hoping to do soon, right? Um, getting it in the hands of people, that's how this is really gonna spread. Uh, and some of the other criteria we, we really look forward to are, you know, so targeting a, a big city. Not everyone has a big city around them, right? Um, well, we really, like to see and what most organizations like to see is organization, right? You know, you don't have to have a hundred volunteers or this and that, but are you able, have you made those conversations in the community? Can you show some of your work? Can you show that you're organized? Can you show that people are ready to do the work, right? Um, work, unfortunately that's the word that keeps coming up, but uh, work, that's the best way, you know, for us to really see if that's viable. Um, and then there's a question from Adam, which is kind of similar, but more related to chapters. So he says, what do I need to do first before determining whether it's appropriate to kickstart a chapter? I don't know anything about the level of support, knowledge of, and where best to focus efforts in my state. It's hard for me to do outreach if I don't know specifically how it would change my local politics. Yeah, I think, so I think there's two things there. One, where do you personally start, right? And, and if I get that right, maybe I can see Adam. But um, where do you personally start? And where do you, how do, how do you know it's going to make an impact? Did I get that right? Do you think I got that right, Kaylin, Adam? You guys uh, yeah, if, if you want, you could just unmute Adam. He might, he might um, want to clarify, but I think he's, basically saying he doesn't know how much support there is in his state. He doesn't know if there are people that, you know, would be interested in this and he's not sure um, how, what 
what impact it would have on his local politics. So how does he know if he should even try to start a chapter? Yeah, that, that was a good, uh, concise summary of my question. Um, I do know in my state, we did just, um, they did just buy like a whole bunch of voting machines. So I'm wondering how that like changes anything. Adam, can I ask where you live? Uh, Delaware. Delaware. Okay, great. Love Delaware. Great beach. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, what is the support network? Uh, Adam, I really hope, uh, I hope you join the, uh, the community meeting that we're going to have. Um, so in the community meetings, this is how it's going to go. We're going to go, you're going to meet people in your area. Uh, you know, it might be rough at first, but then we're going to keep trying to narrow it down. And, uh, you know, you're, you're going to meet people around you who are interested in this. Um, at the same time, what is the support, right? That's what you ask. Uh, this is my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. Caitlin, this is, this is what we're supposed to do. As much as we, you know, love getting, you know, uh, you know, doing other parts of our job, we know the bread and butter is, you know, our job doesn't end at 5.30, right? You know, we're, we're staying up late uh, to do this. Um, so I really hope, Adam, you just, you join some of our meetings, you kind of get to know people, uh, you get, and, and hopefully we're going to find people around you. And again, you are one of the best evangelists that we have, right? And again, just, uh, we have a couple exercises and a couple, basically worksheets, literally worksheets, uh, to help you start thinking through um, all of that. And again, our job is to take the fear component away, right? You guys can do this. If anyone's going to get in the community, it is you. And just the fact that you're on this call and you want to do this shows that shows that you have the leadership and commitment to really get this started. And it's okay if you don't know everything. I don't know everything, but we're going to do it together. I will keep going. So what do we do next? Again, you guys are all jumping ahead of me. Um, attend the meetings. Uh, there will not, we will do a lot. We're going to do a lot. We've noticed from Zoom and doing what we've done, we're going to limit the meetings to as much, to as few as possible and to as streamlined as possible. We've heard that loud and clear. Uh, I think you're going to like them. Join, see if it's for you. See if you like the vibe. See if you like what we're talking about. You obviously like the message. You feel passionate about changing your community. Um, you know, but it's much easier if you don't have to do it alone. I think that's what Adam is also getting at, right? You're not alone, but we also want to grow uh, the group of people around you. And that is also incumbent on you, right? Recruiting other people. Uh, that's why we like this community approach because uh, all of us have been a part of groups that started really hot and fast and then petered out in two months, three months, right? We want to keep it exciting and, and fun and making sure that there's an opportunity for new people to join. Um, again, working on the state laws, um, one of the funner things to do is to, to take a step back and say, okay, how can my community if approved voting was presented to them, how would they react, right? And I think our natural instinct is to be like, it, they will react badly. <laughs> but you'd be surprised, you know, go back through your elections in your city or, or in your county. See how many elections where they had a winner with less than 50% or less than 40% or less than 30%. Um, St. Louis had... 20 elections in five years where the winner didn't get a, did not get 50%. Eight of those, the winner had gotten 37% or less. Eight really important elections, right? And five of those, the winner had less than 30%. That's not fair to them. It's not fair to the, and it's not compared to the constituents. Doing that research, you'll see, and that type of thing goes a long way when you tell people like, you know, people know that it's broken, but like almost Amy said before, that's the root cause, right? We're not really making decisions by a group if 20, 30, 35% of people are the ones making the decision on who gets elected. Um, again, start that outreach. This is part of this exercise is to 
perfectly empower you <laughs> to go and spread the message about approved voting however you see fit. I like to talk about the practicality. I know a lot of people like to hear about the practicality. Um, and we have resources to help you uh, what to say. We have FAQ documents, uh, outreach planning documents, and worksheets. And joining a team. I'm going to talk about teams right here. So we've, we have created, there are many, many, many exciting things you can do. So you can be a part of your community and just kind of float and, and absorb and learn and enjoy the company of people and see how you may be able to do it in your community. We also have, you know, uh, cross country communities that we're doing to help us with the work that, that we need to do. Uh, there are four of us and 300, <laughs> and 50 Americans, not including, again, not including Canadians. Uh, we have a lot of things that we need help with that we, we hope that uh, spark interest. So we're gonna be, uh, these are just a funny list of some of the things we, we need. People who wanna write grants, people are interested in reaching out to corporate uh, funders, helping us find freebies, helping us welcome new people so they wanna stay, helping us come with super dank memes, right? Uh, working out, you know, getting the word out. Be, uh, a legal team, people want to do op-eds and people who want to help us find um, those broken elections so we can kind of swoop in and, and be, uh, be proactive. Um, and we have, I have one, I have two slides left and then it'll be questions, uh, final questions. Um, again, we want to support chapters to become campaigns. We, that's one of the things we help people um, really get across. Uh, and, and, and we are, we are gonna start working on our end, more abilities for chapters or even regions to um, ask for money, right? Hey, we want some lit. We wanna pass out some stuff at the meeting, you know, eventually. <laughs> you know, we wanna, we wanna get an advertisement. We wanna do this in this parade. That's what we want, just like you, right? And just like you, we're looking for big wins. So, um, you know, uh, whether it's a small city, I've worked in small cities and I've worked in states, you know, uh, districts the size of states. The work is exact, the, the amount of work and pain you'll go through is very similar. <laughs> so you might as well go for the big one. And it also attracts, it tends to attract more people. Right, you just you get more people who are involved in the process, and cities unfortunately have often have very broken elections. That is it. Questions? What are the questions we have? There's a question in the chat from Christine. She says we have a lot of retired military in our area and older people. Do you have suggestions specific to talking to those groups? Yeah. Uh, so my, my suggestion always is talk about why it's important to you, right? Sometimes you need a start, you know, some conversation starter. It's not always great, <laughs> easy to just knock on someone's door and say, you know, have you heard about approval? Um, again, I, I recommend doing it in the circles that you're already in. So for example, um, if you're in a club or a league of women voters, say, ask your leadership, ask your group, hey, can I talk about this for five minutes? Right, can I, right at the beginning. Um, that's one way, you know, and then use that kind of shared, you know, we're in this group and maybe our group, you know, voting can change, right? Groups and especially political parties, they have votes every day. <laughs> there's a, there, I bet there's a uh, political party right now in America that is voting right now. I bet you, 100%. That's a great way to talk about, it. you know, you know, cities are where, you know, a lot of this laboratory, you know, laboratory of democracy but parties um, are too. And I know, you know, a lot of places have multiple parties, um, a lot of uh, third parties throughout the country use approval voting already at the, at the highest levels. Um, so use the tie in, just use, I like to use like, you know, one little, uh, thing we have in common. Um, and hopefully, you know, that type of thing helps. So again, start small, right? Make a list of 20 people, 
and, uh, and groups that you're part of, that goes a hundred times easier than trying to go to the mayor immediately, right? The mayor's got to think about all kinds of things. So, uh, and, and if it hasn't been brought to their attention yet, they're not going to do it. So let, again, start small, it's a long process, but it grows really fast. Um, there's also a question from Adam, and I, I like this question. He says, is there anything I can do directly after this meeting? Training or documents I should read and send for outreach purposes? That is great. Yes, we have one document uh, we will share in the chat. I, I will ask. Caitlin doesn't know which one I'm going to tell her, but the uh, we have a, a very great uh, primer for newbies, uh, approval voting FAQs, right? One of the best things you can do is we have a, a video with Mayor Blueberry. <laughs> You'll like that one a lot. That is a fantastic way to teach people about approved voting. Um, one thing we did the other day, and I think we're still doing this competition, right? Uh, with um, Caitlin, the one we started the other day, which is whoever reaches out to the most people in the, what, the week gets a prize. We actually, I realized today that we didn't put a time, a time limit on it, which we probably should have done that. Um, but yeah, we had a postcards and pints event um, on Tuesday where we kind of talked about, okay, who are some people that we can reach out to via email, Facebook message, text, whatever, and introduce them to approval voting. Um, and so if you do that, um, send a, an email to our director of philanthropy, Kirsten, and whoever has reached out to the most people um, will win a free t-shirt. Um, I'm still working on finding the FAQ document for you. <laughs> I, I can find it and, uh, and maybe we can even email it out afterwards. And, and also we have, uh, we could also put up the link, uh, Caitlin, it's very similar, is the approval voting uh, 101 page. Maybe that might be easier. That basically does the same thing. Yeah, we can include the link to the uh, FAQs in the email tomorrow. Great. Yeah, that's a great document uh, to start. Uh, we will also share, there's uh, basically a, a couple trainings, right? You know, uh, how, to, how to make an outreach plan. One of my favorite ones uh, that I wrote a long time ago is uh, it shows, it basically outlines everything I just spoke about, right? Which is, um, you know, getting uh, how to start with you and have it grow out. Uh, we also have a couple of exercises that if you're interested in doing, um, let me know because I have to specific, I make it specific for where you live. But uh, we call them power mapping exercises, which is where you, you find the connections between you and the most powerful people where you live or, or the, the connections you have around you and how you can start. And that's a lot of people need that visualization, right? They need to know, they need to see, wow, we can talk to way more people than we, than we thought. Um, so there are a bunch of documents that we will uh, share, a bunch of templates. Uh, if you would like to do the, one of that exercise, let me know, and um, I will make sure that gets out to you. But I need to make it specific to where you live. Um, there's also a question, there's a couple questions here. One from David, uh, he says, is there a version of presenting approval voting that doesn't conflict so much with the ranked choice option? I'm a little troubled that both organizations, Fair Vote and us, set things out that theirs is seemingly the only solution. Well, yeah, you know, I, I hear that. Um, definitely we have most of the resources on our site apply um, are, are mostly pretty agnostic to ranked choice, right? Uh, what we, uh, and I, I believe this and I will say this, we are, we are alternatives to each other, right? We are both alternatives to the status quo. We know, and we are both much better alternatives to the status quo, right? Uh, the number one question I get is why don't we just pack up shop and just join the bandwagon because they're much farther ahead. Um, you know, we believe a there are reasons to to believe and be okay with alternatives, right? The whole point of this movement is about more choices, not less choices, right? And 
you know, we're a choice. For perfect example is in St. Louis, one of the things that really impacted whether you did approval voting or ranked choice voting was the price and the machines, right? And, you know, and if you follow that logic that we should just pack up and go home, uh, St. Louis gets nothing, right? Because we're, we're not around. I, uh, we are not opposites of each other. I, I think a lot of people think of us as brothers that don't get along. Uh, I disagree with that. I think for the most part, we get along with each other, especially at the high level. You know, some of our supporters tend to clash, but, you know, but our way, they seem very similar, but in reality, they are, they're different and they offer much more pros and cons. And our biggest pro is that uh, it's easy to understand, it's easy to do, and it doesn't cost that much money. And personally, as someone, I think, uh, I think Alan said something to this effect earlier. Democracy doesn't have the best image right now, right? And just part of, part of just the math, the mechanics of ranked choices, the votes go in a box and they come out and it's not always the most transparent way how that happened. And do I believe that it happens correctly? Yeah, but I think people aren't at, at a place where I think people are ready to accept that personally. That's my total opinion, not CES, but that's my own where it's just, I think it's a bad idea to put votes in a box, spit it out and say, trust us, right? I think uh, transparency is one of the best things we have in approval voting. And that's one of the main reasons I'm, I'm here, not anywhere else. Yeah, I think that was a great question from you, David. And one, one thing that I'll say as well is that Usually when people ask us, you know, how come you don't advocate for RCV or what about RCV? Usually the very first thing I say is, hey, we think that RCV is definitely much better than what we have, just like Chris said. But our research has led us to a different con conclusion and it's convinced us that approval voting is the best way forward. Um, but I think also important to consider is that different, different, um, Communities have different needs. And so if for some reason RCV is the best um, the best solution for a particular community and that's what they want, that's what they should do, right? So we, we also don't wanna come in and, and try to act like there's only one perfect solution and then we can just provide a panacea, you know, with approval voting. Everybody, everybody has different needs. Um, so hopefully we can kind of move forward and people can just start to learn more about us as well, about approval voting and other methods, because for most people, RCV is the only one they've ever heard of if they've heard of an alternative method. Um, so yeah, we're just, we're just trying to work on getting our message out there as much as we can. Absolutely, well, that's um, a great question. And then I think there was another question in here. Oh yeah, Marco, he says, do you have any advice for outreach if you don't have fancy credentials? Luckily for you, Marco, I don't have fancy credentials either. So uh, <laughs> I think uh, you don't need it. I, I really believe it. I think uh, the credentials you need, and I, and I firmly believe this, is that you care about your community and you're willing to talk about, you're willing to go out there and, and go talk about it. That's the credentials you need. Let us worry about whether it's mathematically, you know, this or that. Let us do that. We are we are, we have plenty of folks who are happy to help out with that, right? And we'll connect you with those. But go out there and and it's, it's the first thing I learned when I was an uh, organizer. Tell people why you're there and why you're supporting this and what you think can happen for your community. And that that's all you need, right? So not to uh, beat a dead horse, but uh, in St. Louis, and I hope you guys get to read this, Rasheen is one of the, the main organizers of the St. Louis campaign. He's, a, he's talking about approve, he wants approval voting because he feels he's not getting the accountability in his city, which has the number one murder rate in the country, right? There's nothing more powerful than that. And that it's a beautiful way to, uh, he says it in a beautiful way and to highlight a problem that's really bad, but, um, you know, sometimes you have to spell it out for people, but I personally find that 
uh, I tend to accept things more when it's not necessarily someone with a, a PhD. It helps, sure, but you're the expert and you're the expert in your community and just let people know that you believe that this can help them now. Again, I will go so fast. Uh, we got a lot in the chat. Um, um, I think it's mostly comments in the chat. Um, does anybody else have any questions for Chris? Oh. Um, There's a new one. If you just want to read it, Chris. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll read it aloud for the, the recording. Um, so David asks, um, he has one idea that he can immediately get started on. There's a small national organization he's a member of that he just mailed out a ballot for. He happens to be good friends with the president um, and he'd love to call her tomorrow and pitch this idea. Aside from reading materials, how could, or what else could he cite? How does he formally join this organization? That's great. Thank you, David. So um, the best way, uh, I'm sure there's some sort of voting in your organization. That's, I think that's what you were trying to say. Um, I would approach it more as a, as a conversation, right? Uh, you know, I've, I find unless there is a problem, people aren't really interested in fixing, <laughs> you know, um, but point out, my best advice to you again is try to find some of the other election and see, you know, I don't know if you, you, you knew this man, but you know, the last five of our elections have had a winner with less than 30% of the vote. Right. And, um, maybe that's why she's having a hard time, you know, getting things accepted by the group. Right. Um, that's really, that's powerful. Show what you know about the organization and how approval voting legitimately can help. Now, again, a lot of times it helps, especially within groups, so like even a party, right? So again, I've spent most of my life in, in parties, so I'll speak to that. Sometimes there's wings of the party, right? And sometimes they, they take from each other and it's a battle to the death, you know, to, 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 to have their wing win. Um, and, and it's trying to kneecap people and make sure they get out. Um, Approval voting helps people who are similar not penalize themselves, right? That's exactly what we're seeing in St. Louis. We're seeing that we're folks coming from the same community that were hurting their community by making it harder for someone in the community to get in because they would split the vote. That's the opposite of what we want as a democracy, period. Um, so again, show what you know, try to highlight the, any problems and try to try to focus on how you think more accountability, um, more expressiveness. That's the other great thing about approval voting. If you have many options, right? I think of Brexit all the time. They had like a zillion options, right? They could have done approval voting and find and found what was most acceptable to all of them, right? That's a, Brexit's a whole other thing. I didn't mean to get into that. But just know that when there are multiple options in there, they seem to be mutually exclusive. One of the best ways I think I've, I've seen is, is to use approval voting to let people vote on, on the thing, on what they would be able to live with. Um, and then we'll take, we'll take, how about two more questions? Um, wondering how important, I'll, I'll say this for the, uh, for the recording. So, I'm wondering how important states' new voting machines would be in determining what could be pushed for, right? So uh, that's I, it's a great question. Um, voting machine, almost all new machines, you know, in transparency, can do ranked choice, right? That's just that just uh, seems to be what the, the case. Um, it is rare, you know, so I think, uh, I think this person in their state, the state all got new voting machines at one time, right? So that means they're, um, to have ranked choice, and I'll only speak about that because that's what I know, you need a lot more um, of the machines and the system to be the same uh, to do really big elections. Uh, 
with a proof of, a, and, and in most states, it's a hodgepodge of machines, right? It's a hodgepodge. It's, you know, uh, Arlington County does this, Fairfax does this. And the last thing a, gov a state government or a city government wants to pay for a county government is elections. Almost always, it's the last thing that gets paid for. So how's that good for us? We could, um, you know, the dumbest machines in America can do this. There's also growing movement to have much more pen, basically paper trail, right? Um, approved voting is very easy to audit because you don't have those rounds, you don't have the transfers. Um, it's, it's just a fact, right? It's, and, and it's much easier. You can do rank choice and other ones with paper. Um, I just happen to think you do approval easier with paper. You do it show of hands if you want it, but we're, we're not going to move for that. So, um, one more. Do we have any more? Yep, there's one more question from Marco. So, we'll take this and then I think we'll wrap up. Um, so, Marco presents a scenario. Someone says basically, all you're proposing is just first past the post plus, it's not proportional. Do you suggest going into an elevator pitch or explaining the proportional variations of approval voting? I will let uh, also also let Caitlin help me on this one. But uh, so in there's a couple parts to that. First part is uh, the approved voting as we pitch it more most generally, right? Not always, but uh, most of the time. Is it with the idea of a single winner? It's called single winner election. Um, we do that as well because most, many, 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 many elections in America are single winner, right? All your, most your mayors, most your councils. Um, and if they're not single winner, they're blocked, right? So in Fargo right now, uh, if it wasn't for approval voting, they have seven candidates and you'd only be allowed to vote for two, right? Um, I think, the proportional part is above my pay grade. <laughs> proportional in any situation, in any method, gets sticky super fast, right? And that's just what I can tell, and I've been doing this for a while. I think there's also a growing movement for that. Uh, just know that, hey, we pitch for this because we know it's it's first past, uh, it's better than first past the post. But I'm sure, and I'd be happy to hear more, Marco. I'm sure there's elections in Canada where it's just, not always proportional, right? There has to be a mayor, right? There has to be a, a, a single winners sometimes, right? And so I think most people, it happens in America too, they jump to Congress, they jump to president, right? That's the first thing people think about. Like, wow, this would be great if we had a president. Um, <laughs> let's start lower first. There's, there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of elections throughout North America that have single winners. And uh, there is a future of approved voting with proportional. I know, again, the math is sticky, but the math is sticky with everything. And with approved voting and proportional, it's still better than uh, plurality and proportional. Did I get that mostly right? Yeah, I think I would basically say the same thing that you said. Um, again, neither of us are the technical voting methods experts. If, if Aaron, our executive director, was on here, he could talk a little bit more about the technical side of things. Um, but as far as like talking to people and messaging, um, I, I agree with Chris. I think my first, my first response would be, yeah, pr a proportional system would be great and I would love to see that. But it's going to take a lot longer to get to that type of a system. It's going to overhaul, you know, it, it requires a huge overhaul. Whereas if you're talking about approval voting for a single winner election, we can hopefully get that in place a lot more quickly and have, you know, immediate impact. And then maybe from there, we start advocating for um, proportional methods. There is a group um, in Canada. I know, I know, Marco, you know them, but just in case others don't, they're not affiliated with fair vote in the U.S. It's kind of confusing, but they're called Fair Vote Canada. And they, um, they, their main thing is advocating for proportional representation in Canada. Um, and so maybe you suggest like, hey, this is what I want to work on for these single winner elections. But if you're interested in proportional stuff, you can check out these people. Um, because, you know, as David said, we, we don't want to be 
have things be contentious. There's lots of organizations who are pushing a lot of um, important reforms, and so we can all work together. And, and to one last piece of it is proportional, from what I could tell, tends to need big changes, constitutional or legal changes. Right. One of the reasons we push for approval voting is that for the, in many situations, I won't say all, but in a lot of situations, there is a way that approval voting can be used, right? So for example, sometimes they say it can only be two, so I'll use Missouri as an example. In Missouri, they say, the constitution says there has to be two people in the general election, right? So you can't just do it in the, and they have to have over 50%. Um, so what did we do? We went to the primary and we just made it an open primary where we, you know, St. Louis proves made an open primary, we were helping them. But we focus on an open primary where there's a top two, top two go to the general. Um, and we're looking at it for other states in the, in the states to maybe hopefully help them save some of, some of these runoff elections, um, which again, saves people have to hear that, saves, saves them money. So, and, uh, and again, to what Marcus' point is, you know, we, we don't just focus on th the states. We focus on, we do work with a lot of folks in Canada, um, the, you know, the United States territories, right? Uh, Puerto Rico, um, Guam, like we are in the Virgin Islands. Uh, many people can use uh, this reform. So, and, uh, you know, don't be limited in your imagination. We can, we'll, we'll figure it out together. So, uh, well, I will put up uh, my email again. I'll put it in the chat and I will share it with you all. This is my email. Oops. Chris, it's pretty, oh, Caitlin already did it. Chris at electionscience.org and Caitlin, please reach out to us uh, if you have any questions. The next steps is you'll, you'll get something from, our, uh, from us about this event. Um, if you're interested in some of those worksheets I talked to, please email me. Um, be on the lookout for your community meeting. Um, and that's where we're gonna start to work on, on getting approved voting where you live. Sound good? All right, you guys have a good night. You guys have a good weekend. Stay safe. Bye-bye.